Okay. <laughs> okay. So, welcome to the DSS Stories podcast. Today, I have a very wonderful guests here with me to talk about the inspirations and aspirations that drive your journey uh, until now. And also, maybe we can cover some also uh, inspiration for the future. So, I would like to maybe start with a short intro. My name is Ivana. I'm Ukrainian. And as probably a lot of the trainees here, I did my master's related to the things um, within media. So I did media culture studies uh, here in the Netherlands. And now I would love to also ask you to, to introduce yourself briefly. <laughs> Hi, I'm Monica Agava and I'm from Uganda. I did my bachelor's in human nutrition and then a master's uh, in nutrition and health, specializing in epidemiology at Wagner last year but one i keep forgetting i keep missing covid messed up my brain but well yeah everyone's brain <laughs> was messed up by covid yes yeah. <laughs> so uh, i'm arianna i'm 23 i'm from italy um i did my bachelor's in product design and then my master in ux design yes. cool uh my name is Enezemir. i am actually a current student at hochschool from amsterdam i do communication and multimedia design Contrary to, to these guys, I don't have a master yet, but uh, hopefully in about a year time, I will get mine as well. Work in progress. <laughs> That's one of the it's aspirations, a, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's one of the inspirations. Lovely. Mm -hmm. And I would like to maybe start our conversation from a very simple question. I hope it's simple enough. <laughs> so uh, we've all done our journeys until now. And I would like to ask you whether... It shaped up the way you imagined it to be when you were a kid. Like we all think when we are as a kid of becoming someone, um, but things happen in, in between, our preferences change. So could you reflect maybe a little bit on that? Like uh, I think in, in my case it's funny because when I was a kid, I wished to be one of those people that work with dolphins at the zoo. They do like, you know, those shows. And now I'm like against the zoos. So yeah, but I think it's a funny like dream to have to do that. Yes. Did you want to be the person that would swim with the dolphins? Yes. And like, uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and uh, what drove you to become a UX designer? Um, so I did a, my bachelor in product design. And while I was doing that, I understood that I really like to uh, design following what the users want, like really design on what are their needs and their problems. So this is actually what UX design ba is based on. So, mm. yes. So curiosity in the human behavior a little bit. A lot, yes. Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. And as you are also doing uh, your master's, right? Bachelor. Bachelor's related to the digital media. It Do you is. also have to deal with the users? What drove you to, to choose this bachelor's? What drove me to do this bachelor? My previous uh, education was kind of like, a, I guess, the closest uh, thing I could say in English is an associate degree, which is like a, something you do prior to bachelor was an app designer, which is also kind of in the field of development, but more like web-based, of course. I did not enjoy programming. In fact, I hated it, but I did enjoy, you know, uh, seeing users, uh, the way they experience stuff and how I can make them uh, make the system more efficient for them to navigate through and which is why I eventually chose the communication and multimedia design because it's more in that area that area of expertise and is that something that you would like to continue doing or do you think your path will change again I mean right now I'm I'm fine with it but I mean who knows the future is uh is so bright <laughs> 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 I might change course I might stay whatever comes my way I will deal with it okay you know. I think that's a very healthy attitude. Yeah. We have to be open for changes yeah, that basically. come. I didn't know what I wanted to do first. I wanted to actually be a pilot. Yeah, for like a, for the longest time, I wanted to be a pilot, and I did eventually get into the uh, program at the HVA at aviation. Uh, but I eventually kind of freaked out. I just I just kind of the freaked out, and I just dropped. And then, uh, now I do this basically. I know. 
someone who is uh, actually has just now got a pilot degree yeah. in that school and it's so much discipline it is it is yeah and if you come from like an associate degree and go to a bachelor it's like such a big step you can't it's kind of hard to get used to it's like a very it's too much of a difference to overcome in a single year which is why i kind of freaked out and i just eventually dropped it but i'm happy right now i'm happy with this uh uh, education as well at this degree lovely yeah. sometimes our choices will exactly. come for the best exactly Monica you come from a completely different field a different story <laughs> a different background but uh, I think uh, for every other African child it's like your parents want you to be a doctor a lawyer or something but uh, personally I would say I wanted to be a lawyer I don't know for some reason because they look good in suits or something, but also as good at what we call social studies. So I was like, yeah, I can be a lawyer. But then it was contradicting with the person that I am. I was intuitive. I'm a, I'm a quiet person, so reserved. So I also grew up with my grandma at my primary level. She would say, no, you can't be a lawyer. You, you could be a doctor. You don't talk. How will you talk in court? And yet you you don't talk. So she's like, no, you have to be a lawyer. So we went on and on. So we had to change our courses. When you're doing your advanced level, you have to select programs that you're going to do. So I'm like, oh, okay, I can do biology. I can do physics. I can do chemistry. And then food and nutrition. So the, we had a career day. And they came, they introduced human nutrition. It was a new program in Uganda, human nutrition. I'm like, yeah, I think this is great. They sold it to us, like you can do, you, you'll be dealing with children. I'm like, this is so much fun. I'll do then human nutrition because it also has food and I like food, <laughs> I like eating. So I'm like, uh, this, this is me. This is so good. So I don't need to argue in court since I'm quiet. I can just go talk and then they will listen. That's it. <laughs> so I'm like, I'm going to take this on. So I did my bachelor's in human nutrition and then which I continued on to do a master's. I've worked mostly with mothers, which I like to do and children both in Uganda and South Sudan. So it gives me so much energy. I'm mm. like, I can do so much with this. So yeah, I guess that has been it. And now you're here. And now I'm here. Uh, how did that happen? <laughs> <laughs> how did that happen? So after doing my master's, I'm like, okay, one thing we are trying to improve in technology and improving nutrition interventions uh, with technology, how can we design better programs and interventions? So when I looked at your at the, the DS webpage, they had worked on something on behavior uh, waste management, and for me, I'm trying to combine both nutritional sciences and social sciences, bringing in the behavior concept of it. So I'm like, oh, this is so cool. That was my aha moment. Like behavior waste management using technology, I can bounce that around and then put nutrition <laughs> interventions or whatever using technology and behavior uh, change using human-centered uh, technology. So I'm like, okay, this is a good thing for me to add on to my CV and to know this knowledge, which I can use later for my PhD. So you're yeah. planning to bring your current experience to the field that you used to work in. Yes. So you will continue your path yeah. within yeah. the human nutrition. Yeah. So it's integrating. I want to integrate this into my work. Yeah. Sounds really cool. I yeah. honestly it's really cool to just learn new perspectives of how people are using their experience right now. Like some just want to experience something new. Yeah. For some, it's integration in the field that they used to work in. Yeah. Um I would also be curious to hear what drove both of you to the program. Well, like for me, um, since I decided I decided to do UX design because it's beautiful to design something that is going to be functional for people. And like, it's even more interesting to design something that is going to be functional and also really useful for the society. So this is, was my biggest driver, let's say, because usually you just, I don't know, you design websites for like a company that has a bad website or things like this, but it's actually more interesting, like to work on it and put, put effort. Yes. That's why. I don't really have that much of a noble uh, cause, to be honest. You I don't just, have to. I, I just got recommended to me. I I was searching for an internship, and I eventually emailed a teacher of mine here at the local at the, at the HVA, and uh, she said, "You know what? There's a place open at the DSS." I came and I got accepted almost immediately, and I was like, "Yes, I found a, I found an internship. Great, and I I love it so far. It's great." But that's the beauty of it, you know. That just shows how the same experience can be used for different purposes, and then. 
no matter how your journey is going to shape after this, you can just leverage this experience. And that counts for any type of experience that we have on our way. Um, with this in mind, I am curious how it's going to end up. So hopefully in June, I will hear about the results of this. Thank you so much yes. for being here. Thank you.